Hello, my name's Tom Palmer and I'm a children's author and I write fiction and a lot of my fiction that I write is historical fiction um, and it includes First and Second World War stories. Um, I'm here today to do a short, hopefully 15 minute assembly for Remembrance Day 2021 where I'm going to talk a bit about this war memorial where I am today um, and here we are in the grounds of Liverpool Parish Church which is St Nicholas's Church. Um, I want to talk about how this war memorial relates to one of my books, Arctic Star, but also about how when I'm writing the books and when I'm taking part in Remembrance Day ceremonies, how I think about um, the soldiers, the sailors and the airmen who took part in those conflicts. So, with, with war memorials, um, there are war memorials all over the country. There'll be one local to you, um, no doubt they are in city centres, they're, um, they're in villages and they commemorate the fallen of the wars, um, so soldiers, sailors and airmen who have taken part in, in wars and conflicts. Um, and you'll have your local ones. This, this one in particular I wanted to come to today for my um, Remembrance Day assembly um, because this is, this is really important to me. If you read the, the um, stone here it says in memory of those who died in the Arctic campaign 1941 to 45 and you'll actually see um, that these, these have been placed here um, from, um, from America, from Canada and other places in memory of those, those sailors who took part in the Arctic convoys. So on Remembrance Day one of the things that we do is um, we, we gather together, we have a minute silence and we talk about um, we talk about service people who have, who have died in conflicts um, and we, we, sit, we, we sit together, we stand together and we feel sad and we reflect on what it is like to have given your life or, or, um, and to have served for your, your country. Um, and one thing I always try to do, which sort of relates to my writing, is I try to think about, I try to ask myself questions so I don't, I suppose I don't just sit and stand and, and, and feel sad. I think about the what. What is this war memorial for? Who is it for? Who were the sailors who went off and took part in the Arctic convoys? I think about the where did they go? Um, so for the Arctic convoys, it was it was it was sailors, mostly British, um, who sailed um, north to Russia to deliver arms um, and fuel and ammunition to the Russians so that they could fight Nazi Germany from the east, while we our allies, the Americans, Canadians and others were fighting them from the west and this was very dangerous and many 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 men died um, and were severely traumatised taking part in the Arctic convoys. So they, they, that was up in the Arctic like on the north coast of Russia around the top of Norway and that was as you can see between 1941 and 1945 so I've asked the who, these were sailors, mostly young men between the age of about sort of 17 and, and, say, and up, up to 40. Um, most mostly young men who, who took part in these campaigns. That's the who, that's the where, that's the when. The why was to defeat Nazi Germany, which I think we can all agree was um, was an enemy that needed defeating um, and to stop them doing what they were doing across Europe. Um, and also the what, what happened? Well, I suppose I've, I've already mentioned that. The, the sailors were delivering armament to, to Russia to help Russia defeat um, Germ to, to defeat Germany and that for me is the important thing is to if I'm going to come to a memorial, war memorial, if I'm going to think on Remembrance Day about sailors or soldiers or, um, or airmen I have to understand who they were, what they were doing, where they were doing it and that really helps me um, remember them and think about them properly I feel. I'm going to show you some photos now about what the, what the, um, the men went through um, during the Arctic convoys and it will give you an idea of what it was like sailing off into into um, seas where, where your ship would be covered in ice um, and you would have to chip the ice off so the ship wouldn't capsize, where U-boats would be, would be prowling the seas to try and sink your ship to stop you delivering um, material to, to, the, um, to the Russians. Um, so I'll show you these photos now to give you an idea of what the men went through.
so during, during my my writing about history and war, I've, I've done a lot of um, I've done a lot of stories to do with the army. Um, so several books to do with the army. So that's war on the land. I've done several books to do with the Royal Air Force. So that's war in the air. Um, but what I'd not done, and my wife pointed this out to me. She said, "You've done books about the army. You've done books to the land. You've done books about the Royal Air Force, so the air. But you've not done any books about the sea, about the navy." Um, and she made me realise it was really important that I do write because there are not that many children's books about the Navy, about what happened to sailors at sea during the Second World War and I wanted to correct that um, and um, so that is why I wrote Arctic Star um, and what, what I wanted to do when I was writing Arctic Star I was really understand what it was like to, to be through what those photos I just showed you what those men went through um, and I started when I write a book I started to ask the questions that I just was asking earlier about when you're trying to remember someone um, when you're trying to remember soldiers and sailors and airmen from the, the, um, the Second World War and the First World War and other conflicts to understand them you need to ask who they were, where they went, when it was. I do the same when I'm writing a book. So if I'm going to write a book about the Arctic convoys, I'm going to ask like, who are my characters? And I'm going to have to research who those characters were and find out who they were who took part in the Arctic convoys. I'm going to have to work, sort of sort out where it was. So I can't have them in the sailing around the Caribbean. I've got to have them sailing around, around the Arctic. It's got to be when. This is the Second World War. So I have to focus on all those things. And I do a lot of research. Um, but I also, as well as that, because I've done with, with who, that's your character in the story, isn't it? When and where is your, um, is your setting? But also, you've got to think about the why as well. Why? The, and that's the, that's the motivation of your characters. That is, why did your characters do what they did? Um, why did they put their lives in danger? In this story, three young sailors go out to sea. Um, they, they, go, um, they sign up to be in the Navy. Um, and they go off to see why did they do that um, and I looked into that I read about that some felt it was their duty um, some really wanted to do it for the excitement some wanted to be defeat Nazi Germany there's lots of reasons why people did stuff but really you have to understand if you're gonna write a story about um, I'm just listening to those bells sorry I should have gone quiet for them they're lovely aren't they So I thought it'd be good to listen to that because um, we're um, we're in a churchyard and there's some bells going off and I think um, I, th I think sometimes it's good to stop and listen um, to bells and, and contemplate and I certainly did that and I was thinking about the sailors who sailed off from Liverpool on the Arctic convoy. So I've talked about the um, the characters the, that I put in my book and how I did research into the who they were, the what they were, the when when they went, um, why they went, um, and I thought what I could do is read you a short passage just to give you an idea of how I turn my research and my respect for the men that are involved in these these conflicts and then and women that are involved in these conflicts um, I think I think it'd be good to read you a short passage from Arctic Star just to give you an idea about how all my questions and all my thought and all my feelings go into a story So this is um, chapter 13 from Arctic Star um, and I, I suppose what I wanted to do in this book is demonstrate some of the dangers that the, the men were up against and um, this, this, many of the ships in the Arctic convoys sailing to deliver all that uh, material to the Russians faced storms, ice, aircraft trying to bomb them and also torpedoes from U-boats. So U-boats were German submarines um, that were trying to sink our ships um, and the torpedo um, was um, a means that they went, went about this and this 
um, is a chapter um, about a torpedo striking a ship. And one thing I, I want to stress is, I don't just make this stuff up. I think it's really important if you're writing about um, people who have been involved in war is to get your facts right. So I base what I write on on sort of the testimony, the real things that um, that people have been involved in. So the words of sailors and soldiers and airmen. And I, I am really careful to make sure that I get my facts right by researching those um, those people. So these words, although this is my story and I've created this story, it's very much based on the testimony, the words of sailors. Um, and if you're interested in listening to sailors yourselves, go to the Imperial War Museum website. Um, it is it is amazing you can listen to sailors wherever you're from you could put in the name of your town in the search and army navy um, royal air force anything you wanted a different war and you could search for that and you could hear the words of someone from where you live and um, talking about um, their involvement in, in in any of the wars and I, I i use that all the time when i'm writing my books anyway i'll read you a short passage almost as soon as he called out torpedo Frank felt HMS Forget-Me-Not begin a sharp, evasive turn. A move like the last time to avoid the attack incoming from a U-boat. The ship reared up, shuddering, then crashed down as a colossal wave broke over it, showering men as they grabbed for the guardrails and the lifelines. Frank was soaked and freezing. He gasped for air. Where did that wave come from? His mind asked, not understanding what had happened, not yet. Too much was happening at once. It was impossible to work out what was going on. Still confused, Frank looked around, hoping to catch the eye of another sailor to check that everything was all right, and noticed to his horror that most of HMS Forget-Me-Not above the bridge was at an angle of 30 degrees, and the captain was staggering up a sloped deck to reach the tubes. Now Frank knew what was happening. They'd been hit. Even so, he kept his eyes on the captain waiting for confirmation and instructions about what to do next. Open the drenching gear, the order came from the captain. Frank felt a sharp, sudden acidic sting in his throat, then his mouth filled with vomit. Stephen, the drenching gear, he thought of his friend Stephen in his boiler suit, in the warmth of the engine room. He remembered clearly what his friend had told him about the eighth way to die. The seven men working in the engine room would have about a minute Frank knew to endure freezing water that would now be closing in around them. With the hatches and doors sealed shut, the sea would lift them off their feet and they would tread water, still hoping for a miracle. Their heads would hit the ceiling, the water still rising, cold, monstrous. All fires in the engine room would be extinguished, as would the lives of the men in there and of his friend, Stephen. The ship shuddered. Frank felt the explosion at the same time as he saw it. A blinding red flash from behind him projected onto the waves. Had they been hit again? Had some of the missile stores exploded? He heard the sound of feet in corridors, on ladders, shouting, screaming, chaos. But still the captain was at his post, listening to a message coming into him through the tubes. Frank saw him nod and tighten his life jacket. Frank did the same to his. Man the life rafts, the captain ordered. Abandon ship. And that, to be honest, for me, reading that here, I've, I've written that story mostly in lockdown, in my house, listening to the recordings of sailors um, in my house, which is up in the Pennines and miles away from the sea. And here I am reading it now, um, one of the memorials to the men who died in the Arctic convoys, men who died exactly as I describe in that book. And that, that makes me feel quite emotional and that, that makes me feel responsible to tell you the stories of, of war on the, in the air and on the land and, and particularly today on the sea. And every time I write a story, I am so careful to try and get my facts right. I really hope, I, I really hope that anyone who knows anything about the Navy watching this, seeing me here read, reading that, knows, feels that I've got my facts right because it's really important to me to have got my facts right and I hope by doing my research, by asking who, where, when, what, why, how, um, that I've paid respect to the men, and hopefully I have. I think that's a really good place to end, um, and we'll listen to some of the bells from um, St Nicholas um, Church in Liverpool.